At a Kootenai County Commissioner campaign event in April 2022, candidate Bruce Matari was asked this question. So my question as a taxpayer is, uh, what company do you work for right now? And if you're elected, would you continue to have an outside work obligation? Or would you come in prepared to be a full-time, 40-hour-a-week commissioner for the people? Here is his reply. My company is a machine, and I built it. And a good CEO doesn't have to be in the office for up to 30 days. And it still runs fine. Any competent investor would be appalled to hear such a statement. It's laughable, but Matari is serious, which led me on a quest. What does Mr. Matari do for a living? He's obviously successful, but what is the nature of his business? Heck, what is the business name? It's something he's never disclosed in any campaign interview. I started my business in 2006. I took the first order on the desk that I studied on in high school. And within four years, I was actually able to grow the business. I was very fortunate to just under 200 staff and full-time equivalent. It was a 24-7 operation. We were one of the largest DRTV and radio advertisers in the country. And I ended up starting my own business in 2006. I took the first order on the desk that I studied on in high school. And within four years, I grew up to just under 200 full-time staff and equivalents. Here's a short list of companies where Matari has worked according to various sources. QFirst, Tronics Country, NCD. Even these names have changed over the years along with sub-businesses at the same address. The actual number is far greater. The most interesting of these is QFirst, which changed its name to Blue Hippo. With my credit, I never thought I'd qualify for a new computer. But with Blue Hippo, all I need is a home phone and a checking account and approval is guaranteed. We're talking to people who've discovered Blue Hippo Funding's guaranteed approval program. It doesn't matter if you have bad credit or no credit because we don't check your credit. Your approval is guaranteed with just an active checking account. Here's what Matari's campaign website says about Blue Hippo. During my third and final year, the firm, Q First, started a company called Blue Hippo Funding to sell and finance computers to the rent-to-own market. It didn't take long for me to recognize that it was heading in the wrong direction with thousands of dissatisfied customers. I resigned in May 2004, a mere 14 months after it was started, despite being offered 10% and then 25% ownership. Matari was an officer at QFirst Corporation, serving as vice president with Joseph K. Renson as president. He claims to have created the marketing, advertisements, sales scripts, pricing, and potential customer profiles. He refers to these skills in his campaign materials. He alludes to how they were used when he says, when he resigned in 2004, just as the Blue Hippo scam was exposed. A couple claims a computer company took them for nearly $2,000. And Bob, the Federal Trade Commission says they're not the only ones who've had that problem. Fox News reporter April Douglas ex explains. Debbie and Richard Elliott live on a fixed income, so spending hundreds of dollars on a computer was out of the question. But then they saw a commercial for Blue Hippo, a company that would allow the Elliots to make payments. It was paying more for the computer than it was probably really worth. It seemed like a great idea. Little did the couple know the company they were about to do business with was in trouble with the Federal Trade Commission. A class action suit against Blue Hippo filed in California March 2006 describes their operation. Blue Hippo does not provide financing in the commonly understood meaning of the word. Rather than delivering a product and providing the credit a consumer needs in order to meet the purchase price, Blue Hippo collects more money than the consumer would need to pay for the product elsewhere up front. Blue Hippo's practices were deceptive and misleading, preying upon the financially naive and vulnerable, profiting the company handsomely. Joseph Renson eventually took the fall for Blue Hippo, but by then, Matari had moved on. Here's what he says in his resume. Later, it, Q First, became Blue Hippo Funding, which came under investigation where I was a cooperating witness after I resigned in May 2004. A cooperating witness. In many of these cases, cooperation is given in exchange for immunity from prosecution. That may not have happened here. The details are unclear. Blue Hippo was eventually shut down by the government over its misleading and deceptive practices, specifically its misrepresentation of merchandise 
and pricing. Products were not delivered, and prices were marked up two to three times or more what you'd find in the retail stores. According to his resume, Matari then started a company called NCD Financial. What isn't mentioned on his resume is Tronics Country, which according to multiple sources is owned by Bruce Matari. Here's a website listing him as owning the company, currently in Virginia. This website lists the company owned by Matari, but in Coeur d'Alene. Here is the Tronics Country website. Look familiar? It's the Blue Hippo model. The same marketing and sales Matari designed for that company shut down by the government, but with a new name. The Better Business Bureau's website lists details about Tronics Country. Based in Virginia, which jibes with the earlier website details, but headquartered here in Coeur d'Alene. Eight employees, Bruce Matari Management. Further down the page, you see complaints on Tronics Country similar to those with Blue Hippo. Eight employees is not the 200 full-time equivalents he mentions on the campaign trail. Most likely that's because these are jobs based in Pakistan in a call center, not here in Kootenai County or even in the United States. To get more details on Tronics Country, you must burrow further down the rabbit hole to NCD Financial, which is listed on his resume. NCD does the same thing as Tronics Country, the same thing as Blue Hippo. They sell overpriced items to people with no credit over time, costing them several times what the item otherwise sells for retail. Here's a typical complaint from the BBB website on NCD. I ordered a tablet, and with that tablet, they would charge me monthly. It's been over a year. Still waiting on the tablet. Low or no credit people pay a monthly fee to eventually receive goods that cost two or three times what they would have paid retail. According to the Idaho Secretary of State website, Matari owns Mantis Motors and NCD Financial. The address for NCD Financial is listed here. This address shows four other businesses, Benefit Hearing, Incline Financial, Wentworth Jewelers, and NCD Insurance Services. He's not mentioned one of these on his campaign. Not one. Here's the website for NCD Financial, which doesn't show much, but surprise, it's also known as National Credit Direct. Here is that website. Look familiar? How about Wentworth Jewelers? Doesn't it look like these sites follow the same model as QFIRST, Blue Hippo, and Tronics Country? So my question as a taxpayer is, uh, what company do you work for right now? Despite all my research, the best way to get the answer is for Mr. Matari to provide it himself. He doesn't. Consistently. Is he being evasive? If so, why? It would just be so easy for him to disclose everything and prove me wrong, allay my concerns, and the concerns of many others. Here's a quote from a blog post on Matari's campaign website. There's been a lot of criticisms of groups attempting to vet candidates. I personally think it's a good thing. Voters should be able to get as good a picture of candidates as they can possibly be given. It's my sincere hope that you personally look at each candidate running for office. Your duty is to find and vote for an honest, trustworthy person with good character. The position of county commissioner is powerful especially given that there are only three of them and 180,000 of us.